That brings us to the CEO's second duty, building the everyone or more accurately, building the senior team. All the executives report to the CEO, so it's the CEO's job to hire, fire, and manage the executive team. From coaching CEOs, I actually think this is the most important skill of all. Because when a CEO hires an excellent senior team, that team can keep the company running. When a CEO hires a poor senior team, the CEO ends up spending all of their time trying to deal with the team, and not nearly enough time trying to do with other elements of their job. The senior team can and often does develop the strategy for the company, but ultimately, it's always the CEO who has the final go-no-go -no -go decision on strategy. That brings us to the CEO's second duty, building the everyone or more accurately, building the senior team. All the executives report to the CEO, so it's the CEO's job to hire, fire, and manage the executive team. From coaching CEOs, I actually think this is the most important skill of all. Because when a CEO hires an excellent senior team, that team can keep the company running. When a CEO hires a poor senior team, the CEO ends up spending all of their time trying to deal with the team, and not nearly enough time trying to do with other elements of their job. The senior team can and often does develop the strategy for the company, but ultimately, it's always the CEO who has the final go-no-go -no -go decision on strategy. It's a painting competition for artists who are living or professionally based in the UK. There's no stated age limit on it, but it does tend to attract graduate level and Bob artists. Historically, it has had different sections to it. There was, in the 60s, a sculpture section, but that was phased out and that certainly now we're dealing with works that are in, as the rules state, any painted medium. Some of the works, if you look in detail what's in this exhibition, incorporate things like collage, inks, watercolours, for example. It's a painting competition for artists who are living or professionally based in the UK. There's no stated age limit on it, but it does tend to attract graduate level and Bob artists. Historically, it has had different sections to it. There was, in the 60s, a sculpture section, but that was phased out and that certainly now we're dealing with works that are in, as the rules state, any painted medium. Some of the works, if you look in detail what's in this exhibition, incorporate things like collage, inks, watercolours, for example. The Earth is warming. Almost all the Arctic summer ice may have melted by the end of the century, claims the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change the IPCC. The upside access to an estimated quarter of the world's oil and gas resources and the opening of the fabled Northwest Passage. The downside, the Arctic wilderness is lost as neighboring countries, Denmark and Greenland, Russia, Canada, Norway, and the United States all race to share in the bounty. The Earth is warming. Almost all the Arctic summer ice may have melted by the end of the century, claims the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change the IPCC. 
the upside access to an estimated quarter of the world's oil and gas resources and the opening of the fabled Northwest Passage. The downside, the Arctic wilderness is lost as neighboring countries, Denmark and Greenland, Russia, Canada, Norway, and the United States all race to share in the bounty. Experimental psychological research is conducted in a lab under controlled conditions, and attempts to rely solely on an application of research methods to understand behavior and mental processes. As an example of a psychological experiment, you might want to investigate people's perception of different tones. Specifically, you could ask the following question, is it easier for people to discriminate one pair of tones from another depending on their frequency? To answer this, you would want to disprove the hypothesis that all tones are easy to discriminate. Experimental psychological research is conducted in a lab under controlled conditions, and attempts to rely solely on an application of research methods to understand behavior and mental processes. As an example of a psychological experiment, you might want to investigate people's perception of different tones. Specifically, you could ask the following question, is it easier for people to discriminate one pair of tones from another depending on their frequency? To answer this, you would want to disprove the hypothesis that all tones are easy to discriminate. One of the things that people have said about agriculture is that on the whole it is more labor intensive than hunting and gathering. And that's one of the reasons why people have looked to explanations which you might say a kind of coercive factors that people have been forced into agriculture because they had no alternative. That is ultimately what may happen. But at the very beginning it could be that agriculture was developed because people wanted special status foods for feasting, that it was actually a social need. I mean, how much of what we do in our lives is generated by competition with others? And a lot of that is powered by desire for new things, new statuses, new whatever it might be. Respect and recognition also are important. And in small-scale societies a lot of those sorts of factors are generated by the ability to, for instance, throw feasts. One possibility is that some of these foods that were being grown were actually intended especially as feasting foods. One of the things that people have said about agriculture is that on the whole it is more labor intensive than hunting and gathering. And that's one of the reasons why people have looked to explanations which, you might say are kind of coercive factors that people have been forced into agriculture because they had no alternative. That is ultimately what may happen. But at the very beginning it could be that agriculture was developed because people wanted special status foods for feasting, that it was actually a social need. I mean, how much of what we do in our lives is generated by competition with others? And a lot of that is powered by desire for new things, new statuses, new whatever it might be. Respect and recognition also are important. And in small-scale societies a lot of those sorts of factors are generated by the ability to, for instance, throw feasts. One possibility is that some of these foods that were being grown were actually intended especially as feasting foods. Now that story's been scotched as only part of contingency planning, but it was a symptom of the dramatic turn of events in South Australia. 
and it flushed out other remarks from water academics and people like Tim Flannery, indicating that things were really much worse than had been foreshadowed even earlier this year. So is Adelaide, let alone some whole regions of South Australia, in serious bother, considering that the vast amount of its drinking water comes from the beleaguered Murray, something many of us outside the state may not have quite realized. Is their predicament something we have to face up to as a nation? Now that story's been scotched as only part of contingency planning, but it was a symptom of the dramatic turn of events in South Australia, and it flushed out other remarks from water academics and people like Tim Flannery, indicating that things were really much worse than had been foreshadowed even earlier this year. So is Adelaide, let alone some whole regions of South Australia, in serious bother, considering that the vast amount of its drinking water comes from the beleaguered Murray, something many of us outside the state may not have quite realized. Is their predicament something we have to face up to as a nation? For many years, the favorite horror story about abrupt climate change was that a shift in ocean currents could radically cool Europe's climate. These currents, called the overturning circulation, bring warm water and warm temperatures north from the equator to Europe. Susan Lucia, an oceanographer at Duke University, says scientists have long worried that this ocean circulation could be disrupted. For many years, the favorite horror story about abrupt climate change was that a shift in ocean currents could radically cool Europe's climate. These currents, called the overturning circulation, bring warm water and warm temperatures north from the equator to Europe. Susan Lucia, an oceanographer at Duke University, says scientists have long worried that this ocean circulation could be disrupted. As Joe noted, one really important point here is that we are really at the very beginning of seeing what is going on. And, what we are seeing in the credit markets is a pricing of risk initially, investors were pricing their investments. And the kind of deals they were asking for were ones where they had a historically low premium required for the risk that they were taking. And now, the pendulum has swung much the other way, because I think that people really don't understand exactly how much risk they are taking, and I'm sure that they are waiting on the sidelines to see. As Joe noted, one really important point here is that we are really at the very beginning of seeing what is going on. And, what we are seeing in the credit markets is a pricing of risk initially, investors were pricing their investments. And the kind of deals they were asking for were ones where they had a historically low premium required for the risk that they were taking. And now, the pendulum has swung much the other way, because I think that people really don't understand exactly how much risk they are taking, and I'm sure that they are waiting on the sidelines to see. Green chemistry is a concept designed to develop technologies which allow chemistry to be practiced with minimal damage to the environment or in an environmentally compatible way, and it's meant to cover both chemical processes and chemical products. The center was set up about seven or eight years ago, and the idea was to provide a hub of activities that covered fundamental research work, international collaboration, 
but also educational development on public understanding of the project as well, and also networking so we network out to well over 1,000 people around the globe. Green chemistry is a concept designed to develop technologies which allow chemistry to be practiced with minimal damage to the environment or in an environmentally compatible way, and it's meant to cover both chemical processes and chemical products. The center was set up about seven or eight years ago, and the idea was to provide a hub of activities that covered fundamental research work, international collaboration, but also educational development on public understanding of the project as well and also networking so we network out to well over 1,000 people around the globe. For four centuries after the Viking declined, the people of the Shetland Islands off the north coast of Scotland continued to sell their goods through the North European Hanseatic League. The Hansau merchant bought shiploads of salted fish and in return the islanders got cash, grain, cloth and other goods. This lasted until the Act of Union between Scotland and England in 1707. This act prohibited the Hansau merchant from trading with Scotland. Consequently Shetland went into an economic depression. The independent farmers of Shetland had to sell their land and were then obligated to pay rent, eventually becoming serfs. For four centuries after the Viking declined, the people of the Shetland Islands off the north coast of Scotland continued to sell their goods through the North European Hanseatic. 